last month I went rifle hunting Colorado first rifle season it is a limited draw only season you have to apply at the end of winter um, usually around April 1st I've hunted this season almost every year for the last five or six years coming up to this year a hundred percent success and this year would be no different my friend Jeff Goodwin came out with me he was gonna help with the camera work we probably walked 10 miles on Saturday we had blisters on our feet it was extremely hot I had talked to multiple people um, during archery season and the beginning of the first rifle that weren't even seeing elk one of my YouTube followers named Ben was hunting on a mountain near where I was hunting. We were texting back and forth. They weren't even seeing signs of elk. Multiple bulls bugled all night long. We're talking 7 p.m. until first light. All night long we could hear bulls screaming at each other all over the mountain. It was a super hot early fall. The daytime temperatures, even in town in the high country at 9,000 feet, were up in the 60s, lower 70s. The elk were being mostly nocturnal, and of course, the fact that we heard them bugling all night long solidified that fact. Also, it was evident that the rut was probably up to a month late. It is October the 11th, so, you know, most places in the Rocky Mountain region bulls aren't bugling anymore you know and I've hunted this season a lot of times over the years I've only ever heard them bugling this late twice that's an elk barking off in the distance I'm not necessarily sure if he is alarm barking they do alarm barking to warn elk also it's a sign of communication as well but we've been sitting here listening to this elk bark for a couple minutes it's still dark it's starting to get light out it's probably like 6.05 a.m. I don't know if you can hear that or not I don't have the external mic on it's 6.20 a.m. so it's very very slowly getting light out but that bull is still down here in this meadow it's 6 38 a.m. and we're making a stock on this bull that we hear it's still not a shooting light not quite yet but we're very close we can still hear it make a noise and we are definitely within 100 150 yards <laughs> We finally made our way up to a meadow where we had some cover behind some trees. I could see a small cow calf out in the meadow quartering away from me. I continued to hear those barks, those half bugles, back behind her in the timbers. Nobody's seeing any elk. The temperatures are extremely hot. The elk are being mostly nocturnal. This cow calf stands in this meadow broadside, quartering away. I can't take it anymore. Jeff and I have almost 10 minutes to go over how he's gonna get the shot of me taking the shot of the elk. Yeah, guess what? He took 10 minutes of footage of a tree branch. Yeah. My emotions ranged from extreme sadness to mild anger. But at the end of the day, what are you going to do? I can't fire my friend, but I'll make sure I never ask him to touch my camera again. Okay, we can still hear that bull that's bugling, but I just could not get a shot at him. I could hear him off in the distance. There's a small cow, a calf actually, or she might be a yearling, and I just shot her because it's good meat and she's small and she stood out in the middle of this field forever, forever giving us the perfect shot. So uh, I didn't want to risk anything and scare away the bull. 
I'm here about the meat. And so uh, we're gonna give her a few seconds. She's down there probably uh, dying right now. And then we're gonna run down and check her out. Last year, I get my biggest one ever. This year, yes, this is my smallest one ever. And we watched her for a long time. She's a small cow calf. Um, so why did I kill a small cow calf? It's the second day of the hunt is number one. Um, I just shortened my hunt by several days and I don't need to be up here killing myself. We walked over 10 miles yesterday. Our feet are killing us. And we were actually having problems today. I put band-aids on my feet because we were going up and down that crazy terrain yesterday. Um, but the big reason as well is I am within a quarter mile. I could almost see my base camp from here. So I still have meat from a couple of deer in the freezer, just a little bit of meat and a little bit of elk from last year. Bam, I got myself a young, beautiful cow here. And I'm also gonna go deer hunting in Nebraska, God willing, <laughs> next month. Praise the Lord indeed and pass the elk. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my videos, please do so. Please continue to leave those thumbs up and encouraging comments. The more thumbs up I get, it gets me better placement when people search for elk hunting and wild game cooking on YouTube. So whether you get a dinky little elk like I got this year or a big old six by six like I got last year, still remember, give God all the glory. He's the one that gave you two legs. He gave you two arms. He's the one that gave you the incentive, the excitement in your heart for hunting to begin with. He's the one that gave you the ability to put gasoline in your tank. So remember, at the end of the day, there is a God that loves you and he sent his son, Jesus, to be your savior, to die for you, that you could have eternal life. There's more to life than hunting, although hunting's pretty darn cool. So until next time, this is the Rocky Mountain Meat Hunter saying praise the Lord and pass the elk.